Okay, so last week we talked about standard deviation and the empirical curve or the empirical rule for the bell curve. So just a quick recap. Let's just say it was, um, we'll do an easy one. We'll do number seven. Remember the average or the mean, that's going to be written as mu. In this case is 60. The standard deviation is six. And so you would just keep going up by sixes and then down by sixes. And the empirical rule said that 68% of the data was contained here. Once you have these boundaries, 95% of your data has been collected. And between here and here, 99% of the data has been collected. So this is why when you say like, okay, 99% of the data has been collected, but there's still a 1% chance. Well, look how much data you're collecting in that 1%. It's going to be high and low and it truly does not matter. Uh, it will not affect it. So now we're going to talk about how to use this. We're probably going to talk about this mostly all week and end the week with a quiz. Um, it is a simple concept, but it does take a little while to like grasp it, I guess. And it takes just some practice of knowing what these numbers are. All right. So the first thing it wants us to do here is there is a mean of 5.1 and a standard deviation of 0.9. So that's easy. This would just go to six. 6.9 and then what is that 7 point no 7.8 I don't know I'm not that good at math 7.7 anyway 7.9 6.9 plus 0. 0.9 7.8 I was right okay uh then you're gonna subtract 0. 0.9 so you got 4.2 here 3.3 and 2.4. Okay, now let's talk about the percentages. So all we're gonna do right now is just come up with the percentages. So what I like to do is draw these little bars. This entire thing is going to be 68, but just to make this easier, I'm going to make this 34, which is half on the right and half on the left. Now, I need to make up 100% of the data. I already have 68, and I know that this, between 3.3 .3 and 6.9, needs to be 95% of the data. So if I already have that 68 where it overlaps, that means I have 27% of the data between these two little columns. So if I split that in half, that means that just in this little section alone is 13.5. And so this is what you're going to set up every single time we are doing one of these problems. Not only should you memorize the 68, 95, 99, but you should remember how to break down this, cur uh, this curve. Now, between here and here, it's supposed to be 99% of the data, but you already have 95. So that means that you only have 2% left, which is going to be oh, 4%, and then split in half is 2% and 2%. And since the entire thing has to be 100%, you only have 99%, which means you have 1% left. And so these little tail ends that do not matter are going to be 0.5%. All right, so let's go and get started here. Oh my goodness, I can't. Hey, not now. All right, so they would want to know how what how much what percent of the data is between these two numbers. So between six and six point nine, now you're just reading the graph. It would be thirteen point five. Greater than six point nine, 
would be 2%. And don't forget, we put the 0.5 here. So 2.5%. Between 4.2 and 6, that's 68%. Less than 4.2. Less than 4.2 is going to be everything here. 13.5 plus 2 plus 0.5. So that's uh, 14, 16%. Less than 5.1, well, 5.1 is the median, so that's the halfway point. So the other half is the other 50%. And then between 4.2 and 5.1 is 34%. Okay. Now, for this one, you don't necessarily need to draw a graph, but I would just to figure out what's going on. It says test scores, test scores are normally distributed with a mean of 76. So I'm just going to sketch mean of 76, and a standard deviation of 10. So you don't really need to even draw the curve if you don't want to, but you could say this is 68. Here's your 95. And then that's 99% of your data. Okay, so it says, in a group of 230 tests, how many sc students score above a 96? So 96, I guess let's just, let's do the other percentages real quick. So 34, 34, 13.5, 13.5, 2, 2, and then on the outskirts are 0. 0.5 and 0. 0.5. So how many students score above an, a 96? Well, it's 2. 0.5% of students, but it doesn't want to know what percentage. It wants to know how many. So if there's 230 tests, 0.25 as a decimal, or 2.5%, I'm sorry, is 5.75. So we didn't reach six students. It was five and part of a student, but that doesn't make any sense. So in this case, only five students. Okay, I'm I'm doing a lesson. My husband's on lunch. He just announced that. I don't know if you heard him. <laughs> uh, the next one, in a group of 230 students, how many students score below a 66? So here is 66 and you want all the percentages below 66. So 13.5, 0. 0.5, that's 14, plus two is 16. So then you're just doing 16% of 230. Which is 36.8. You cannot have a 0. 0.8 of a person, so you would say 36 students. That's the next one. In a group of 230 students, how many students score within one standard deviation of the mean? So remember, one standard deviation is just one jump to the left and the right, which in this case, and always, is 68%. So 68% of 230 students is 156.4, so 156 students. So you do need to draw this chart every time. It's really just a sketch. Um, I'll do this last one. The number of nails of a given length is normally distributed with a mean length of 5 inches. A standard deviation is 0 0.03. So 5 plus 0.03. Three obviously is 5.03. And then if you just keep putting in on your calculator plus 0 0.03, you'll get that ANS button that pops up. So this will be 5.06, 5.09, 4. 7, 4.94, 4.91. Okay. And really, right now, because 
we know what numbers we're supposed to get down here. When you're doing the problem, the numbers should not be different. You know what I'm saying? Like, see how these numbers, I already got all of these numbers. Because that's how it's jumping. So you should get the numbers that are in the problem, if that makes sense. Like, it's not going to ask you about 3.12, because that's not in the problem. All right, find the number of bags, number of nails in a bag that are less than 9.4. So again, I'm just going to split this up. 34, 34, 13.5, 13.5, 2, 2.5, 0.5. All right, less than 9.4. That's 2.5. So 0.025 of 120. is three uh between nine point four point nine seven and five point zero three well, that's sixty eight percent so eighty one point six or eighty one nails and then the number that are over five point zero three so that's here five uh, 13.5 plus 2 plus 0.5 is 16. So 16% 16 of 120 is 19.2, which goes to 19. So that's how you're using standard deviation with the percentages. There is going to come a time where the percentages... We're not going to use these percentages. That's for something else. If you look on the side here, you'll see I have these other lessons called Z-scores. That's for another time. Um, but for right now, the 68, 95, 99 rule is very straightforward. And as long as you know how to multiply a percent, um, you should be able to get the answer very easily.